Hi everyone, this is Chris Souter with MLC CAD Systems. In this tech tip video, I'm going to show you how you can configure your SOLIDWORKS PDM Vault to add a button to your data cards that will give your users the ability to click and see where the files are within their workflow. As workflows are very customizable and can go from being simple to very complex, this tool will provide new users as well as existing users a great way of interacting with your workflow process. This will also help them to understand where the files are and what transitions are available next. On top of making your vault more user friendly, the other nice thing about this is it's actually very simple to set up and it can be done using out of the box configuration tools. If this is of interest to you, sit back and I'll walk you through how this works and I'll show you how to set this up within your PDM vault to make your vault more user friendly. Before I go over how to set this up, let's take a quick look at this in action so we can understand the benefits of this configuration work and really just determine if it's something that's going to help our organization. So let's take a look at my vault. Now here in my vault, I just have a couple of things set up at the current time and I have one file, just a SOLIDWORKS file. Um, on the data card, I have a button that sh tells me show me where the file is in my workflow. That's the, the name of the button. If I click on this button, it shows me where the file is. If I transition the file to another state, click the button again, it now shows me where the file is in the next state. I do have the states here in the column view and on the data card, but the nice thing about this is it's much easier to understand for a new user or if the workflow is very complex. With this visual aid, we can see where we are in the overall process. So next, I'll walk you through the process of how to build this in SOLIDWORKS PDM. In order to explain the overall process, I've broken this down into individual tasks. And let's step through these so you can see how this is done. So step number one, you'll need to capture image of images of your workflow and add any callouts or visual aids. There's a wide range of tools you can use, but for this example that I'm showing you, I'm actually using Snagit. I'm capturing my images and I'm putting them in a location that everybody can access them. So here in my vault, I've added the images and let's go ahead and click on one of those so we can see it. So I've added these individually. Um, I'm also capturing bitmap. The, uh, the format of the files can be you know, whatever you choose. So you would capture the images of your workflow, add any visual aid you want, um, and there's flexibility there in the file format or what tool you use to actually capture the image. There is one key thing here that you have to be aware of. Obviously these images need to be accessible to your users and to your PDM system. I've tested this on a network drive, so if everybody had access to a network drive, you could store all the images there. But you're already using PDM, so why not store them in the PDM vault? You would, however, want to make sure that the users do have these files cached locally. So what you'll want to do is go to your, your users, or well, the groups of the users, and uh, you'd want to go to your cache options and just make sure, like you do with your templates folder, that this folder is cached during login. So that just guarantees that the users have all the images locally on their PC when they need them. All right, so that completes step one for us. That, uh, that creates the images. It also completes step two, which is to cache those images on our local PC. The next thing that we need to do is create a variable. And in my case here, I've created a variable called status. The variable itself is going to update as the files go through the workflow transition. So the status of the file will change. And then I'm using a button on my data card and I'm using control logic to, uh, actually I have multiple buttons, but I'm using control logic to turn on and off the buttons so that the right image is displayed for the workflow state that the file is in. So let's take a look at that in a little bit more detail. So like I say, I've created a, uh, a variable and uh, I just called it status. And obviously it's writing to the files themselves. 
um, in the workflow. And as you can see, I have a simple workflow right here. The status is updating as the files are transitioned. So for each transition in the workflow, I have an action that is updating the status. The value that it updates with, again, this can be configured different ways. I've used numbers. You can update the status with the name of the workflow state if you want, but I've used numbers and I'm basically doing it like this. This is workflow state number one, this is number two, this is number three, and I'll just carry on like that if I add more workflow states. So the status of the file, when it goes from this one to this one, it's gonna go from one to two. So I am setting the status here to value number two. And then as it goes to this workflow state here, I'm setting the status to workflow status number three. So that's basically how this is working. Now on the data card, I have a button, and that's what basically displays the image. Now what I actually have here is multiple buttons. And each one of these buttons is uh, labeled the same, but they're all linking to a different image. And I'm using web address to just basically point these to, to the image I want to show. Um, so what I'm doing here is I'm turning two of the buttons off and leaving one button on. So when you click on the button, it takes you to the correct image. The way I'm doing that is using control logic. So as you can see in here, if the status is not equal to three, this button is going to be hidden. So it'll only show if the status of the file is at three. And then, you know, similar control logic for the rest of the buttons. So this one here is if the status is not equal to one. So if it's two or three, it'll hide. If it's one, it'll be shown and it would link us to that image right there. So as I say, I've got three buttons. I would just line these up on top of each other on my data card. In fact, I have them on this side of my data card. So I'll make that the parent. And I'll line these other buttons up on top of it. And then that way it gives the appearance of only having one button. But in actual fact, there's three buttons. It's just that two of them are disappearing and only one is being shown. So that's basically how this works. Um, we make the images, we cache them locally so the users can access them. We create a variable. In my case, I've used status. That variable updates or changes as the files transition through the workflow. And the buttons are logically linked to the status and the buttons show or disappear based on the status of the file. So hopefully that all made a lot of sense. And now you're able to understand how to configure this in your vault. If not, don't worry, I'm going to go through this process again and show you how we can set this up so that an image is displayed when a file goes to an obsolete state. So let's have a look at how to build this. Um, the first thing that we would want to do is update the, the workflow. We're obviously going to change the workflow. Um, so we'll create the new state called obsolete. Just drop that down there at the bottom. We want a transition from released to obsolete. So we'll add a new transition. And we'll call that center obsolete. As we saw earlier on, we need the transition to update the status of the file. So we'll create an action in here that updates status, which is just a variable status is the name of the variable and we're updating it with a value of four because this is now our fourth workflow state so as the file goes to obsolete the status updates to uh, a status of four in our procedure that we we looked at earlier on the first step was to create an image of the workflow I have a little bit of a dilemma here and I'm gonna ask you guys to bear with me. So I'm using Snagit to capture my images. I'm also using Snagit to make this video and I can't do both at the same time. So 
I have an image that I made earlier in preparation for this video. In reality, I'd go ahead and create this one now. But I'm going to go and drop that into my vault. And let's just go ahead and check it in. Let me take a look at the preview window. So as you can see, I've just added a obsolete state that shows you know, a similar kind of image to what you've seen for the others. Okay, so now I have all my images. They're all going to cache locally because I've got that set to do automatically when we when we log in. Um, the variable's already set up, and the variable in our workflow is set up now to update with the transition. So next, let's go over to the data card and see how to configure this to show the correct image. Now on my data card, I actually have three buttons that are using the control logic. So as you can see, based on the button that I select, it changes which image it's looking at. And all I need now is another one of these buttons that will show me the obsolete image. The easiest way to do this, because the, uh, the configuration work is already done for the button, is to just simply copy it and paste it. So I'm going to do a control C with one button selected. I'll do a control V, which will paste it. It will paste it right on top, so you'll have to slide it out. But as you can see now, I have two buttons. I click on this one, it's pointing to the released image. I click on this one, it's also pointing to, to the released image. I just need to change one of these and tell it what image to point to, which is the obsolete bitmap image, which is right there. So I'm just basically telling that button that that's the image you go and grab. And then I want to update the control logic here because it's pointing to uh, the status of three. I want it to only show this button if the status is four, which is the obsolete state. So let's save that. We'll do like we did earlier and neaten up our data card by just dropping everything on top of each other. Uh, let's see, I want to also make sure that, let's just do that again, because I want to make sure that these look good. I don't like to see anything overlapping. So I'll start with that one, grab these other guys here, line them up. Okay, now it looks a lot better. So we'll go ahead and save that. All right, let's go back into our vault now, and we'll take a look at this in action. So if we go back to our file that we were using earlier, it's currently in the release state, so if we were to click on the, um, the image button now, it shows us where the file is. If I now move it to the obsolete state, click on the button, it shows us that the file is now in the obsolete state. There is something else to consider here. Um, obviously, I've updated the workflow, so my other images don't show the obsolete state. So there's a decision to make. Do we want to update all the images, so obsolete shown? Or do we want to just show this whenever the obsolete state is used? And, you know, these are typically the ones that are used on a daily basis. So we would just have the images for those. So there's a decision to make there. But um, as you can see now, the image shows correctly for the obsolete state. Um, the setup is uh, pretty simple to build that. So let's review what we've seen in this video. So the process is actually pretty simple, as you can see. It's uh, If we break it down into steps, what we're starting off with is just creating images of our workflow. We're snapping an image of the workflow, and we're adding callouts for each state in the workflow. And then we're saving those images as separate files. We're creating a variable to assign files with a status. The variable is then added to the workflow transitions and we're adding an action that updates the status of the files as they go through the approval process. We're then adding buttons to the data cards. We're putting logic on those buttons so that they hide and show based on the status, and whichever one is shown is linking us to the image that we've saved of our workflow. So as you can see, the overall process is pretty simple. It gives us a great visual of our workflow. Our users can see the status of the files at any time with a great visual aid. It makes it easy to understand where the files are in the approval process, what's coming next, 
and what options they have to transition the files back and forth. So I want to thank you for taking the time to watch this video today. Again, my name is Chris Souter. I'm with MLC CAD Systems. Feel free to reach out to me if you have any questions. If there's any content you would like me to add to our YouTube channel, uh, you could always reach out to me. I am on LinkedIn. You can reach out to me directly via LinkedIn. And I would be happy to hear from anyone who has any ideas. I'd be happy to answer any questions that anybody has. Thank you.